Gateway Computer Club, is that where you want to be? Just <laughs> <laughs> making sure, because there's other functions that happen there. Could you just tell us your name and how you found out about it? Uh,
fizzled out the last couple of trips we took, and there was a lot of effort. So I think maybe we bring them to us. So if you have anybody, go ahead. Uh, now that we have a YouTube channel, you might want to do that on the YouTube video of that. That might find people around the area that's on YouTube, seeing that we took computers yeah. for membership. You know, and that's a good idea. I think Stephen and Zach and Chuck are going to try to video as much as they can. Just keep putting new clips out there. barbecue and swap meat, so hopefully everybody will have some new toys by June and you want to get rid of stuff that's in your basement. And then in July, I just wrote down Cloud and I wrote Zach and Trevor. Oh, so do you know what you're going to show in July? If anybody's willing to uh, send us a Google uh, Drive that makes up the Google system for that So the kids now don't actually store their files on their hard drives. Well, I my, you can as a backup, but my son is in high school and they store all their files in the cloud, right? It's Google Cloud, Google Drive, Google Docs, Google everything. He does PowerPoint presentations using Google's version of it for high school and gives presentations and stuff. So it's kind of the keep a local backup, but it's always in the cloud. If you need to get to it, you can get to it from any computer. Just log into your Google account. So Zach's going to go through some of that essentially cloud-based home computing. And you can use it for multiple things. In the corporate world, I may show this if we get it set up by then. Um, we're actually moving to a cloud-based project management platform so we can run our projects and coordinate tasks and things like that over the internet with our partners and resellers and other people that are stationed in different parts of the world. So hopefully that will be set up by July. They're in the process of figuring out if they're going to buy that or not in the next month and then hopefully it will be set up. I can maybe show some of that. There's a, a site called Teamwork, there's another one called Basecamp, there's a bunch of them out there. But they allow you to do your schedules and planning and coordination remotely, so you can get on your phone and say, I did this task, and it'll update everybody else related to the project. So you don't have to keep Excel spreadsheets and Microsoft project projects or send a bunch of emails back and forth. It's all automated. It makes it a lot quicker. Yes. That's why she uses two emails. Um, <coughs> Chuck's busy, but we'll let him talk about this. Um, Amore Italian. Carlos is going to talk about the restaurant that we're debating on going to. Um, we were going to La Peria right now. You talk about I'm German. <laughs> and I didn't say the L like La Parilla. I didn't do that. Um, so we're debating on switching the menu to go to Italian or something different for a little while. We've been eating Mexican, Mexican, Mexican for a while. So we're thinking about going to this Amore Italian Ristorante. That one was a So if anybody wants to join us for the next board meeting, you know we have board members and other members show up sometimes. Uh, we'll put it in the newsletter. Stephen will make sure that happens. Roy's not here. Maybe no. Amore. Italian restaurant in O'Fallon, 1050 Eastgate Drive, O'Fallon, Illinois. So we're going to try this out for the next board meeting. They said they can give us a special room so we can all meet in there and talk and eat and do whatever we need to do. Um. Chuck, do you want to talk about charter modems right now or are you want to wait? Yeah, I have a couple thoughts besides the modem. So it's a dome or just one? 
Ten minutes worth. All right. Um, have I been owned? It's like the phone. Owned the key. The website, um, have I been pwned.com. You give your email address or your usernames on, on whatever website you typically use. And if they ever spot that username or email address in one of the breaches that you know they publish that certain websites have been hacked um, and the people publish the usernames online, they'll send you an email saying, by the way, your username on this the service has appeared in the breach of the service somewhere. You might want to go check and, it out. And Zach's email was a lady I work with, her husband was, so it is a, a real security issue with all the we had four people that I know of that had their taxes you know, filed for them before they actually went to do it oh, wow. because of the anthem breach. A bunch of people I work with and my mom were all involved in that. I would say move on Twitter. So <coughs> just, just, as a little, just as a little suggestion, if you do use it, go ahead and go sign up for LastPass. Yep. Right. That's, that's actually, sorry, uh, but then, you, know, you give them your email address, your usernames that you use on the various sites, and if they ever find that in a known list of breaches, they'll send you an email. LastPass has that same feature built into it. We, we every meeting recommend LastPass, right? LastPass is free. You go to the security checkup, and in LastPass, it'll tell you it's found any of your usernames of any of the accounts that you have in LastPass have been have been reported in a breach anywhere. It's a wonderful tool. It's just like they have it in Pwn, but it actually knows all your accounts and you can go key them in on you know, one at a time and have you in Pwn. I actually use both. That way, I get double protection in case LastPass doesn't catch one of these guys catch. If you haven't used the LastPass security checkup tool, <coughs> we really recommend you try that. If you sign up for LastPass, it's free. The security checkup tool will tell you if these usernames appear, and it'll also tell you all the sites you have weak passwords on or duplicate passwords on. And in some cases, you can just click a button, and it'll go create a new password for you on that website and change it for you and give you like a 20 character random password so no one can easily guess it on. It's kind of nice to have 128 <coughs> characters to get on your credit card. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I think right on the record, 96 characters would have been more of a new egg, wouldn't take any longer. <laughs> I got 128. There you go. Excuse me. Um, and they even give you like a score, where you, where you rank on your, sec on your security score uh, with the rest of the people. Um, and shows which sites, you know, the ones that give you lower, lower rankings and stuff. I think my, I got my total was like 96, so I'm, I'm more secure than 96% of the rest of the population out there. Um, uh, charter. <coughs> if you haven't upgraded your cable load in a while, you're probably going to want to. Uh, Charter right now is working on a 16 by 4 channel bonding. What channel bonding is, um, your cable modem gets its information just like over a TV channel, just like your cable TV does, right? So imagine you've got like channel 2 all the time, or channel 4. Well, with channel bonding, they can put multiple of those channels together to give you a fatter pipe to get down to your cable <coughs> modem. And the original cable modems only did one channel up, one channel down. <coughs> now they're doing, it's pretty common to see 4 by 4, and the Charter right now has 8 by 4, so it's 8 down, 4 up. And now they're moving to 16 for in the St. Louis area, it's already out. Um, now here's the trick though, your cable modem has to support the 16 by 4 bonding, right? Or even the 8 by 4. Um, Charter won't support your rated speeds at anything less than an 8 by 4 modem. So if you've bought your modem in the last couple years, or, or your modem's only a few years old from Charter, you're probably at best 8 by 4, probably 4 by 4, and you won't get, the, or we pro Charter won't promise you the rated speed. If you call them and say, my speed sucks, but yeah, your modem's two or three years old, bring it in and get a new one. It's free. Just go down to the store and get one. <coughs> um, I have a list of these. I'll try to send out to the, to the list server. Um, there's a bunch that only guarantee for 60 meg service, which happens to be the one that I have, which is why it's more than 60. And there's another chunk that supports the full speed, and there's a couple that aren't supported yet that will give you even, even further. If you read the specs of the modems, it'll all tell you it'll go like to 384 meg or so, but that's actually under ideal conditions. And by adding more channels, right, you essentially get yourself away from the congestion on those other channels and you increase the odds of actually get the speed that you're ready for. Uh, so again, if you haven't upgraded your charter modem, cable modem in probably the last two years, unplug it, walk down to the charter store and say, I want a new modem, this one sucks, and they'll give you a new one. You go home, you plug it in, it takes you to the web page, you go, this is me, and you're done. It's pretty easy. Um, Uma. Uh, Uma is a, is a telephone provider we, we recommend, kind of like Bonage or... Uh, Magic Jack, although it's much better. Uh, if you have Luma, they now support uh, what are, what's called Nomo Robo. Nomo Robo is, is a service that uh, has a big list of all these telemarketers that keep calling you and bugging you all the time. And what you do is you set your phone up to ring the Nomo Robo number at the same time it rings your phone. It's called simultaneous ring or multi-ring. Right? So when your phone rings, the Nomo Robo 800 number rings at the same time. The Nomo Robo guy looks at the caller and you go, oh, we knew who this is. They pick the phone up and they hang up on it. So your phone might go ring once, maybe twice, and the call's gone. 
Uh, I was getting about five or six of these damn things a day, uh, even with the community blacklist out of UMA. I set up for a turn on normal robo, and I'm down to like maybe one a week, tops. It's a big difference. You can probably do no more robo if you don't have UMA, uh, at and and a couple others. Even Charter, as long as you have simultaneous, or what's sometimes called multi-ring, you can, you can use it. Just go to the NOMO Robo website, and they'll, they'll show you how it works in the provider support. Okay. Sure. Yep. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Yeah, it's a great, it's a free service. Um, this guy apparently won some contest the FTC had on how to block telemarketing calls a few years ago. Uh, let's see, Samsung. Uh, Samsung just announced a new uh, SSD drive they're coming out with. It uses the new NV, NVMe standard, non-volatile memory compressed standard. This is the follow-on to SATA, and it's essentially you plug it into a, if, into a PCI Express slot, um, and it's a direct pipe into the drive, which gets rid of the bottleneck that SATA has unfortunately found these newer drives. To give you an idea how much faster this drive is, it has read write speeds of 2.2 gigabytes per second. Okay. Wow. Right. Um, even the fastest SS SSD drives that use um, SATA connectors right now are doing good to do about 540 megs. This drive is about um, four times faster. It's actually the same drive, it's just the interface is no longer the bottleneck on this. So if you're buying a new computer, probably not this year, but next year, start looking for that uh, NVMe standard in, in the laptop. It's going to be a higher machine to start with. It'll make a big boost in your performance in your computer. Yes. Now, this is the same drive. Well, yeah. this is brand new. This is really <laughs> expensive, right? Yeah. 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 Just, make, just make sure you charge the credit card whenever you buy it. It won't be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, Steve, if you put it in your DOS 3.1 machine, it'll make it a lot faster. There you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is all. Um, all right. Uh, YouTube channel. We don't have a YouTube channel. I just sent it out on the list server today. Um, we're going to start doing it. If you can't tell the cameras, but we're going to start videotaping. Show me. It's called videotaping. The demo is like we used to do, you know, a uh, couple years or so ago. We used to record them, put them on uh, a disc with AVI files. You guys could buy them for a buck. Then we started putting them on DVDs. You guys could buy them for a buck. Uh, the problem is the librarian wasn't here a lot of times, and you know it just became a pain in the butt. So that's the home capture and go through a couple more hours of this, and finally we just stopped doing it. Well, now we're going to do it again, but we're going to go through YouTube, and it's on the list server. Uh, it's also on our Facebook page if you want to go to your channel. Right now, I've only got eight demos up. They're all from about 2003, 2004. It's the only one that had laying around the house. Yeah, it's when he had hair. Yeah, it's when I had hair. <laughs> and, and it was blacker. <laughs> 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 blacker beard, too. Yeah. Well, I, I actually still have all my hair. It's just not on top of my head anymore. It's, gonna, it's more hair migration than hair loss, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but anyway, um, so if you guys have any of the old club discs at home, the DVDs, the regular discs, bring them on in, and I'll rip them and put them up on YouTube, and then give me back your discs, okay? It may take me a meeting to get back to you, but uh, we'll get them up there for you. And that's uh, youtube.com slash the Awakening Computer Club? No, it's got, it's got some funky thing. I haven't figured out the custom URLs yet, so. Okay, yeah, so the custom URL, if you just type in what you name the channel, uh, it's like it's youtube.com slash user slash whatever you name the channel. Okay. So we'll take you to a URL. All right, well, we'll I'll, I'll work on that. I had a hell of a time getting to work to start with because they wanted to go on my rigor Gmail credentials. Mm -hmm. It was like, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I finally got it working. Um, along with this, uh, we're trying out a new couple new cameras. This is the one that Steve got um, yeah, yeah, from, from a friend. Zach. I'm sorry, Zach. I'm sorry, Zach got from a friend. Now, this is the one I just bought over there at uh, Micro Center yesterday. That was uh, $58. They have a $40 one that's almost identical. They're actually little action cameras. It's designed to be mount mounted on skateboard, a helmet, your backpack, whatever have you, right? There's no LCD panel on it. But it shoots at 1080p. Um, it'll also do 720p, but at 60 frames a second, so higher frame rate than it's capturing the action. On your micro SD card, it's got a battery that'll last for about two or three hours in it. It's waterproof down to 30 feet. Uh, that one has Wi-Fi in it, so you can actually control it from your smartphone if you want to. Right? And that was $58. The cheaper one was $40. I was originally at the $40 one. I was staying in the store and saw that one as well. A bigger battery for an extra 20 bucks, why not, right? And if you're wondering why there's white spots in the video right now and you can't see anything, it's because Dennis is shining a flashlight in the lens. Thanks, Dennis. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah. Audio yeah, should be. Oh, the yeah. flash is there? Should have a little red light flashing, right? Uh, well, you're talking to the guys home on the Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I've only had about 
Yeah, three minutes to play, but we're supposed to win it earlier to get it set up, but again, we're running late. Um, so, that's a wind book? Wind book? Wind book, yeah. It's about the cheapest camera like that I've found. There's one from um, uh, Brook, uh, Brookstone. It's on Amazon. It's not sharp range. One of the guys owns a sharp range camera. But it's about the same price. It has an LCD panel on it. But rather than being waterproof itself, they give you like a cage for it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so we're going to start videotaping the, the demos, and I figured since we're doing the demos, we may as well do the rest of the meetings, and we'll start putting this up on YouTube for you guys. So from now on, if you guys ask me a question I've, I've answered before, I'm going to tell you what? Go to YouTube. Perfect. Yeah. It's like Google. Oh, wait, right. they're all in the same moment. Yeah, let me Google that for you, right? <laughs> we actually, that is very relevant. We have a new lady at work who's my age or older. We, oh, my God. We, she's old, right? So she should know about computers. And we said, go go look for this on the internet. So she's like, I can't find anything. So the other lady, who's older than her and myself, went and said, well, what are you doing? She was going to Wikipedia for all her searches. She didn't know that Google existed. And we literally sent her a let me Google that for you link that Chuck had showed us that. It actually shows a hand clicking. And I'm like, I didn't know that would ever be relevant for anybody that actually uses computers every day. So it was actually, you can use that, and there are people that. Think not her going, like, she, if it wasn't in Wikipedia, it didn't exist on the internet for her. So it was a bizarre wake up moment for me. I think she was a hippie in the 60s and she never recovered, maybe. I'm not sure. It's not like Carlos, but without all the brains. Um, so is that like Carlos, though? Yeah, kind of. The, um, all right, so we're down to. Steven is going to talk about the website design. <coughs> yes, please. So, he's practicing uh, public he speaking. Wants, he wants, I want to have <laughs> uh, um, not, we've been talking about making a new website.
state of Florida on the back of it. It's an I-5 2400 from a business that was shut down. So he's going to have some of these. On this one, since he can do whatever he wants with it, he, he offered to let us auction this off for the club to make a, a fundraiser, basically. So if you're interested in this, I don't know who wants to be an auctioneer, but we can auction off the computer right now and see how much money we can raise for the club. And how much do you want between auction and do you want the part of the proceeds or is it all going to the club or how do you want to do that? Um, yeah, we didn't really discuss I'll, the I'll have to that out. Oh, let's, 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 uh, let's split it. Let's see what happens. Okay, so we'll do a 50-50. Yeah, you want me to
stuff. I had some left in my brain and I lost it when he hit the table so hard. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll probably think of it in a second. Jerry, you got anything good? demo, if you hear any of the names of the software they're using to clean computers, Zach's going to have them here. If you want them, you can put them on a thumb drive. If you bring up a thumb drive or a memory card, he'll load it up for you with all the utilities they're going to talk about, so you can go home and use them on your machine. That way you don't have to think about it or write down names or download them yourself. Steven?
Hang on.